so anyway, uh, today we're, uh, we're talking, uh, we want to introduce you guys to Splunk. So just a quick show of hands, who's heard about Splunk or who knows Splunk? Okay, not bad. I mean, see, it's getting better. Yeah. This is what I told you, you know, I mean, it used to be like nobody. Um, we're still a small company, right? We're, we're, not, we're not a giant software company yet. We'd hope to be in a few years, but uh, we are, we're, we're still starting off. We have about 13 customers here at the state now, so made some nice progress. We hope to add a number more by the end of the year. Um, um, when I talk about Splunk, most people think of us in a couple of different contexts. When I, and I'm, I'm out here every day. I'm, I'm local. I live in Sacramento, so I visit my state customers just about every single day. And when I'm talking with them, typically um, one of two things comes up. You know, they want to talk to me about security, right? That's a big thing for us. It's a big market for us. It's top of mind for a lot of my customers right now. There's a lot of new requirements out there. There's a, a lot more recognition of the types of attacks that are coming in. So people, that's a, just a very hot topic. Um, the other topic that people want to talk to us about a lot of time is uh, like troubleshooting, right? Something's going wrong with my IT infrastructure. You know, how can you guys help me figure out what's going on? Um, so those are, if, if I was to, to tell you the two things I, I, I normally talk to people about, those are the two things. But what we're here to talk about today and why I ask people if they know Splunk or if they don't know Splunk is because to introduce to you what, how we see Splunk, right? The people that sell Splunk and, and how more and more of our customers really are seeing us, frankly. And that is Splunk is really a platform, okay? So it's a platform for machine data is the best way to describe it. And when we talk about this today, hopefully you'll get a flavor for that. So we are loving the business to solve IT operations problems and we're loving the business around security. But the strength of the platform is with all that same log information flowing into our platform, there are all a bunch of other things that you can do with that same data. You're not, you don't have to go get new data. You can if you want. But with a lot of the same data that you're pulling in for these other purposes, you can find true business value. And so today's presentation really is all around what kind of meaningful business insight can we pull out of that very same data that we might be inspecting for security purposes or for troubleshooting purposes, for compliance purposes, for a variety of other reasons, how can we show the strength of that platform? Okay, so truly, what, where are the extra value points within that platform? And so today I brought with me um, a director from our product management team who's in charge of sort of enabling the product for business analytics, and that's Rahul here. And so he's gonna kind of give you first part of the presentation about sort of what's possible, right? And and what's the what's the business challenge that companies face and how, how can our tool address some of those business challenges? And then we're gonna kind of jump into some specifics. He's gonna show you a little bit of what the software looks like. Sometimes if you can get to see how it moves around and what it actually does, it, it sort of starts connecting those neurons in our heads a little bit to make us you know, understand what's real. Um, so after that, then we're gonna kind of kick it over. We're gonna talk about um, a couple of use cases that we are already doing. So you know, oftentimes, um, and this is not a criticism at all, it's just really reality, you know, Fortune 500 is innovating all the time with technology, right? And they're, they're, they're seeing things maybe ahead of where our federal government uh, is or where our state government is. And so we see a lot of innovation in, the, in that area, especially around analytics and things like this. And so I, what I want to do is kind of bring that back and say, yeah, there's all this great stuff that's going on with some of the largest companies in the world, but what's actually happening in the public sector? And how are they using our tool for some of the business analytics and public sector? Things that are meaningful to citizens that are engaging with your agencies. So we'll bring it back there, okay? And then hopefully we'll have some time at the end for questions because we'd love to hear, you know, the problems you guys are trying to solve and, and see if we can't throw some ideas at you or maybe have you swing by the booth later and talk to one of our engineers, okay? That sound good? Perfect. All right, great. Thanks, Jason. Good morning. Uh, I'm Rahul Deshmukh. I'm Director of Solutions Marketing. I focus on business analytics. Uh, before we get started, our legal team sends this very friendly kind of slide, uh, which really what it basically means is we cannot make any commitments to uh, any forward-looking statements. Um, if you see anything, a product roadmap or other things, we can't commit to it. We are a public company, so we need to kind of state that. So let's get started. Um, pretty exciting times. Uh, we live in a world that is mobile and connected. Uh, with traditional boundaries that are expanding into the cloud. Uh, so cloud is, everybody's talking about mobile, everybody's talking about the cloud. With new software-defined networks um, and application delivery, which is more around continuous application delivery with multiple releases during the uh, day or multiple times during the day, 
and with an uh, analytics driven approach for security to combat fraud or identify uh, any malicious activities and an explosion for Internet of Things. What this means is these mega trends are, uh, are driving a new class of data, a class of data which if harnessed properly can drive innovation, help you manage, deliver and secure any of your mission critical services. Uh, this is what, uh, what these technologies are doing. We just have to listen to this data. However, listening to that data is much harder than it sounds. Um, machine data is different. It is voluminous uh, time series data generated by all your IT, your business systems. Uh, it is a non-standard uh, format of that data and it changes the format very, very quickly and it's very unpredictable in its formats. Um, traditional systems can't manage this machine data. Traditional systems are different. Uh, they require you to transform the data and force fit into a very uh, brittle schema. Uh, what that means is you need to define upfront what questions or business cases you're trying to solve, and then you build a system around it. To listen to your machine data, you need a system that is very flexible on the type of data that, that you are analyzing, the volume of data that you are analyzing, the variety of data, and the variability within the data that you're dealing with. You need a solution that can keep up with this unstructured data, uh, which is coming at you at much faster uh, volume, velocity, and variety than, than you can process. There's a lot of value within machine data. What might look like a very difficult thing to do, it contains very critical information. It contains critical information like customer information. It contains critical information uh, like phone numbers or any error codes that have happened. This is just an example. And if you have a right product, and if you add a little bit business value to the data that you that you are already collecting within your logs, uh, sometimes unstructured or semi-structured data, you can really drive a lot of innovation within your organization. And we are just not the only ones saying it. This event is a lot about data. Uh, Gartner uh, kind of um, published this very interesting stat. It says. By 2017, over 50% of all analytics implementations would include some sort of data, event data stream. And what does that mean? That What that means is it's going to be unstructured or semi-structured data. You cannot wait for a batch to be completed before you can get insights. You need to kind of react to things much more quickly. We talked about web, uh, about mobile, about cloud. What, what those are doing is really pushing the envelope on how quickly you want to analyze this data and how quickly users expect you to react to any variances in the user experience. The business analytics world itself is changing and, and we, we are at the forefront of this disruption that is happening within the business analytics world. So don't think of Splunk as a BI tool. BI tools or data warehousing tools are more focused on structured data. Uh, what, what we see is the, the traditional ways of, of doing analysis on this data are no longer applicable. You have a data that is changing in nature. You want uh, ability to go and analyze that data very, very quickly. And there are new capabilities uh, that, that would be needed to analyze this data. Data will define mission critical success. I mean, uh, a number of organizations, uh, both in in, in public sector, in federal, state, as well as in, in, in the Fortune 500s that Jason was mentioning. They're transforming the way they do and look at data. Data is, uh, all the decisions are more data driven. They look at data to, uh, to drive any, in, any success within the organization. It could be operational savings, or it could be incremental revenue. It's both ways. You guys have been asked to do uh, more with less. Eh? Anybody disagree in this room? please raise your hand. I mean, you guys, every day, it's just not about efficiency. It's about efficiency, which is in cost savings. It could be uh, anything on how quickly can you respond to things, or it, it could be incremental revenue that you guys have been asked to uh, drive within your, uh, within your agencies. So just on the same lines, it's just not about you know driving uh, efficiency as far as it relates to IT operations or uh, making sure you have a secured environment. Uh, you also need uh, ability to go and respond to things much more quickly. 
and that efficiency could be if somebody is trying uh, having an issue with your online property or with your application uh, or anything uh, that is customer facing you want to make sure you can you are res uh, resolving those things in a timely fashion the mean time to resolve uh, is an important element and you <coughs> at the same time you also want to have very good uh, visibility into what are the key business metrics all these are coming from uh, you know, on from machine data so big data and you heard uh, the term big data and a lot of folks talk about it at the heart of it it's all machine data it's the fastest growing most valuable uh, and however the most complex set of data that is coming from a variety of systems these are the systems you're familiar with you know things like web servers email clickstream data things from your sensors or your servers your desktops it's all unstructured or semi-structured data that's coming at you uh, machine data is very critical because it has a categorical record of every user activity or uh, any changes that happen within your IT and your business systems. Our mission at Splunk is to make that machine data accessible, usable, and valuable to everyone. The last one is very important because uh, a lot of folks will say, hey, we can do, do with data. Um, what I would say is, doesn't matter if you can just house the data, driving value from that data, which can help you drive efficiencies or help you improve uh, cost and revenue is more important. So Splunk is a platform for um, that machine data. So there are three things that we do in Splunk we, uh, at the core of, the, uh, of, of everything. One is the reliable collection of the data. Collecting data from any of the data sources, uh, from tens of thousands of data sources, Indexing the data, we have our own indexing engine, uh, which is based on the MapReduce principles, which gives us uh, ability to go and provide real-time access to that data. And a very flexible and powerful analytics layer on top of it. We have our own search language, uh, which is just like you might, if you guys have heard, are familiar with SQL or any of the queries, uh, query processing language. Pretty similar um, set of things with Splunk. We have our own very flexible and powerful search language that can do everything that you can do with SQL as well as uh, some um, more stuff. So that's the core platform. Uh, the analytics layer is all powered through that search language. You can do the visualizations, you can do dashboards, reports, uh, you can do ad hoc search on that data. So think of the notion what uh, Google or Yahoo did for the consumer, we have done for the enterprise with that search language. So end-to-end -end platform, three things, indexing, uh, collection indexing, and visualization of that data. And then we have multiple products that we'll talk uh, a little bit in detail. But then based on the on top of the platform, there are multiple solution areas. Uh, Jason was mentioning security, IT operations, application delivery. And then there are emerging areas like business analytics or internet of things, data uh, coming from your sensors, your industrial data, and then business analytics is around business systems. When we talk about business analytics, there are, again, uh, multiple use cases and multiple uh, areas within business analytics because business analytics is a very loaded term. It could mean uh, anywhere from digital marketing to improving customer experience to product analytics uh, to taking data from middleware to understand business process and what are the bottlenecks within that business process and how do I kind of fine tune that business process uh, to doing things like industrial data and internet of things, taking data from your uh, HVAC systems and there's an example that uh, Jason will walk you through from your HVAC system to uh, taking data from your sensors in the buildings to taking uh, data from a any of your other control systems that are in there. Uh, and that, that's just the industrial part of it. There's also a consumer part of it, uh, which is around applications, it's around mobile, it's around um, any of the personal devices that, that come along. So I'm gonna switch gears a little bit here, uh, and, and pr probably you guys are wondering what uh, you are talking about Splunk and what that hunk is. Uh, hunk is uh, another product within our product line, uh, as funny as the name could be. Uh, it is uh, Splunk Analytics for Hadoop and NoSQL databases. So any, any Hadoop customers here? Anybody playing with Hadoop in production, thinking of Hadoop? Okay, uh, that's what I expected because I'll, uh, Hadoop's uh, in production is like 10%. So um, we will skip that. But that's literally an analytics layer. If tomorrow you think of Hadoop, we have a product that can help you go in 
analyze that data very quickly if your data is at rest. So I'm going to switch gears and give you a quick demo of the product because I know I can be speaking here for half an hour and you might say, oh, this is kind of boring. Um, show me the product. So, so here is, um, oh, that's tough to read, uh, unless you have a magnifying glass over there. But I'll, I'll just speak to it. It's, it is a lot complex uh, data set. This is from a t telco that, has, that is producing you know, some raw business events. And this is a lot of logs that can be from uh, the radius authentication logs to the application logs uh, to middleware logs and th that are coming into Splunk. If you were to put this into a traditional data warehouse system, you would have to define a physical data model, do an ETL, load it into a batch, and these things are happening very, very uh, much in, in real time. More importantly, the format is changing. So how do you keep up with that? What we can do is on that same data, uh, we have a very flexible and powerful search language that I can search on the data. And, and I can say, show me X, Y, uh, this particular metrics. And I could literally start typing in index equals. And uh, let's say I'm just doing a sort on on a transaction query, I could just search on that data very, very quickly. And this is this is Splunk. I mean, it just shows me uh, here. I, I just ran a query of all the SQL statements that are being run. What tables are they coming from? Uh, to what uh, transaction speed is? I could do that. That same search language or whatever you see here can power a lot of stuff. I can do visualizations on it. Uh, all with a single click of a button, I can do some pattern recognition, or I can create some very interesting dashboards. This is a dashboard for just simple web store visibility. And, and all this dashboard has is different panels that are powered through those searches. So for business users, uh, somebody could just create these dashboards, or we've made it even simple to, uh, to enable that. We have a concept of a uh, pivot table uh, that you could use pivot tables uh, against machine data, which is unstructured or semi-structured data. Typically, pivot tables are against structured data. You know the measures and dimensions, and you're creating pivot tables. You can go and analyze that same data uh, using uh, pivot tables. We also have a concept of a data model, which is very different than what you have seen uh, with a traditional data warehouse. Here, it's knowledge objects. Well, all it does is takes the business rules and embeds it within within uh, a data model. There's no physical storage. There is no processing. It's all in real time. With the latest version of, uh, of Splunk, you don't even need a data model. You have the data indexed in Splunk. You can just point to pivot to the new data and to the data that's indexed. You can start analyzing the data. The, the other thing which I wanted to call out is we are schema at read, not schema at write. Uh, do you guys understand the difference between schema at read and write? So I, I see some nods, some yes, some nays. So I'll just explain it. What schema at write means, I have the data. Uh, I'm defining all the rules. I'm telling what uh, schema it needs to fit in. And I'm putting it into a specific schema. With Splunk, we take the data and we put the data into key value pairs. So here's a key. The key might be IP address. The values might be here are the 100 IP addresses. Or here is a customer ID, here are all the customer IDs. We understand that data into key value pairs. And we apply all that schema when you hit that search button. So let's say you introduced a new field in there called customer name. You don't have to go and define it uh, into anything upfront. You could just start, you could index the data, that new uh, field just populates itself into, into the search and you can start analyzing that data very, very powerful for uh, driving efficiency within your organization. So that's just one example. Uh, I can go uh, export it. I can do a lot of things. Here is another one, which is an exact level number of transactions in flight. So somebody uh, they're, they're might be uh, doing uh, things online. So I just kind of, uh, I was doing a transaction uh, maybe last month uh, on the DMV site and I was kind of getting a renewal on my registration. I did a transaction. You could track how many transactions are there in flight right now, how many transactions are successful. If there's some, something is not successful, why is it not successful? What is the value? How many folks are uh, doing registration which is based on custom number plates versus 
you know the regular number plates and so forth uh, you you can do a lot of interesting things because all those all those things are within the data you can also do things like within a geo map where is the traffic coming from now this is important because it's from a business standpoint you want to understand where people are doing a particular transaction let's say you have a number of transactions coming from north korea what would you do would you be excited or not so it has a security implications as well right so the same data that a security professional is using you could use it for business by adding the business context to it and customer support customer support and customer service is an interesting thing this is Splunk, believe it or not. It is part of our developer framework. We have a developer framework where you can embed and create your application. So this is for a customer service person. They've added a customer ID, or in this case, it's a mobile device, and said, show me all the interactions this customer had in the last 24 hours. It could be as simple as, here is all the authentications this customer did, what the download history was, let's say, or transaction history. If they called in uh, and there are some speak and there are other notes, there are some notes that I can pull in data from that IVR system or other things. And I have those notes as well. Hey, it has been known to be dissatisfied. This is what the rep typed in. I have access to that data. So imagine uh, moving customer service to a, another level. So instead of saying, hey, here is a diagnostic script and you're measuring things, this is actionable data for, uh, for your customer service folks. Same data pivoted differently or added more context to it could be used in multiple ways. Sure. So going, going back to the customer service and uh -huh. analytics, if, if I have, uh, say, uh, 5,000 members that hit the website and they're doing searches, uh -huh. and then I want to know uh, based on whether the log on that's a good question so it's all about adding business context so if you have demographics information so it's a good point so if you have data in a relational database so the question was yeah hey, I have access to all this real-time data but can I understand by age group and demographics information a number of our customers, what they do is they take all the machine data, index it into Splunk. They might have a relational database which has customer segmentation information or customer demographics information. What, uh, what we have enabled is a mashup of that data all in real time. So we have either doing lookups, so you could bring that data and index into Splunk, or we have something called DB Connect, which is a free app on our app store, and we'll talk about apps in a second, which provides a bi-directional connect, uh, connectivity with relational databases. So you could have this unstructured data that's coming at you or machine data that's indexed in Splunk. You have structured data in a relational database. You're marrying those two things together in real time without moving the data. And that's the beauty of it, without moving the data. You could also have data in any of the databases and we can index it or we can just do a quick lookup through a JDBC kind of superimpose the machine data with those meaningful business insights. But we can show, if you come back, uh, co come by the booth, we can show you a quick demo of that as well. So let's talk about um, some customer use cases because um, we have a lot of very interesting use cases in, in the public uh, and in the state and local governments uh, areas that would really bring uh, all these things together. So. Splunk platform for machine data. Uh, we kind of talked about that. We talked about you know the different products we have. I showed you a quick demo. I think these will bring all those things together. Thanks, Ramu. Mm -hmm. Everybody doing okay? Okay, good. Um, so, a couple things that uh, Rahul has said. I keep. I gotta stay over here. Uh, a couple things that Rahul has said that I want to um, point out. Um, so how many people right now, I'm just interested, and, and don't feel shy, uh, how many people right now are building a data warehouse? Just, that's it, come on. There's gotta be a few more, I mean, or have an existing one, right, you're recovering. Right, uh, so listen, I, I, I've you know, been in technology a while, built data warehouses in my past. Here's the two problems that I see, and we addressed this just a second ago. Uh, first of all, a, a, the traditional means of sort of getting those business answers, right, is all around 
knowing what questions you need to ask at the time that you start building your data warehouse. Well, for, from those that raise their hands, how long does it take you to finish that, right? It takes a heck of a long time. Okay, in my experience anyway. This is, in my experience, you know, it would take a couple of years even sometimes to get our schemas done and all the data pulled in and all of it, you know, organized and ready to do reports. Well, what happened after those two years? Well, all the answers that I needed two years ago have now changed. All the questions I need to ask are different now. That to me is uh, a 90s approach to a, a new, new millennia's problem, right? And so what I, when I look at Splunk, I really think of it that way. It's, just a, it's really a different way to attack this problem. So number one, that, okay? Number two, you can't do real-time in inspection really with, with traditional data warehouse and those means, okay? So if there are real-time issues, and we're gonna talk about some of the things in, in some of my customers' use cases here that uh, you know, sort of demand that real-time inspection. If there are use cases that demand real-time inspection, you just can't do it the old way, okay? Um, and then the, the third thing I would say is that um, you're really ignoring the largest growing segment of your data, okay? Doing traditional things. And, and I'm not saying throw away your data warehouse project. By no means am I saying that. There are very specific business needs for that type of project. They're, you know, looking at that structured data from your business systems has real value and need. Um, all I'm saying is wh why are we ignoring that giant growing segment of data Right? Why are we not looking at that? Why are we not looking at the business models that we've created out of structured data and seeing if we can't make them more accurate right? by adding machine data to that, mashing it up as Rahul was talking about? There's no limits to that. And I would argue that with Splunk, the way we kind of look at data, the way we access data, you can get started much faster starting to answer those questions. So not saying get ready to the data warehousing projects. I don't want to make anybody mad. You know. There's billions of dollars being sold every year of that software. It's great. Um, all I'm saying is maybe maybe take a look at you know some of this other stuff, right? And take and take a look at a different way of getting to that same endpoint. Okay. So that's that's how I'm going to lead into that. Um, I'll get off my soapbox now for just a second. But um, we do have several use cases across government, and and it's not just in the traditional areas, as I mentioned earlier on about mitigating security threats. I mean, we get that reducing IT costs, right? Hey, if we can take a SEV1 ticket that's been filed with the data center and we reduce the time it takes to resolve that ticket from seven days to, to one or two because we're able to search through all that data much quicker, that's a great savings, right? And so we've built a big business around those two segments. But what I'm really interested in talking about today is you know, finding real meaningful business analysis in that same data that we're ingesting for, for maybe other purposes, okay? So um, all this slide is really talking about is you know, what, are this, what are some of the things that we've done for our customers? Certainly we've done the security and the IT stuff, but w we've been able to really you know, take a look at if we're offering an online service to a customer, right? How fast are they moving through that service? You know, what is their experience like when they're using that service from our, our department? How are we able to measure things like worker productivity, right? So now, as we talked about doing more with less, you know, how long is it taking each of my caseworkers to resolve a case, right? You know, what's, what are metrics around that? Um, improving our engagement with our constituents, right? You know, uh, if I look around at all the state departments I work with now, everybody's got a Twitter feed, right? Everybody's got some kind of social media going on. And we're all searching for better ways to engage with our constituents, right? So that's sort of an important component of service delivery. So sort of each and every one of these, whether it's in you know, justice and public safety or transportation or health and human services, we've really kind of crossed all those sort of micro verticals within public sector, and we found different use cases with each. So I'm just gonna go into a couple of them in, in detail here. Um, so for, before I get there, um, let's talk about some ripe targets. Okay, so we talked about you know, leveraging machine data Everybody's already looking at the structured data. Well, let's talk about machine data for a minute. What are some ripe targets for you guys to go after like today, if you wanted to? You can download Splunk for free, right? So just go to the website, download it for free, uh, ingest some of your machine data and start seeing what you can find. But um, some ripe targets for me, when I look around at my state departments, I see a lot of, so uh, I started working with state government back in the 90s, kind of late 90s. You guys remember that? It's a long time ago. 
Um, I remember it as sort of the death of good rock and roll, you know, so Nirvana kind of came and went, and the positive side of that, you know, explosion of the hip hop and R&B movement, wonderful. Um, but, you know, anyway, so that's what I remember about the 90s, but what I also remember about the late 90s and early 2000s was our message, I was working for a large software company at that time, our message there was, to government was, let's get customers out of line, right? And let's get them online. <laughs> that was, that was really it, right? And 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 but but you know here here we are you know 20 years later, and I, I look around at the websites for the state of California, and I look at DMV, they have a tab that says online services, and it's this long, right? And I look at all the tax agencies, you know EDD, BOE, Franchise Tax Board, amazing self-service presence out there, right? We're asking customers to get online and do these services. We're not, we're not asking them to come in and see us anymore, right? Um, we're, we're trying to find more efficient ways to handle our customers and better ways to deal with them, okay? And so that, that transformation has at least partially occurred. I'm not saying we're all the way there, right? But I am saying that it has occurred, okay? So I would argue that the next revolution of all this, right? So now we've got people online. We've got our customers out of line. We've got them online. So the next evolutionary step to this is how do we deliver our services better, right, in this new context, right? We have people online. How, how can we make sure that our services are reaching the right people? And I think that's where we're going. Honestly, I think that's sort of the next evolution is now we've got all these services out there. How can we make this experience better? But I think in order to do that, we have to understand our customers, right? And we have to understand what their experience is like when they're dealing with us online. Okay, so when I'm talking to customers about business analytics and what our tool is kind of uniquely capable of doing, I'm really talking to them about this kind of stuff. Understanding your customer experience and understanding, understanding their behavior when they're on your website. And then on the other side of the, of the equation, I'm also helping them understand how are my, you know, the two most important constituents are your customer, your, not your customers, your citizens, your constituents, whatever we want to call them, our customers, and then our employees. Right? So the other half is, how are my workers engaging with the system? Is it making them more productive? Right? So when a director goes out and he says, hey, I'm going to build a completely new system for doing unemployment insurance, for instance. Yeah, I'm going to spend a couple hundred million dollars, right? It's expensive. But what am I getting out of it? Right? Is, is the service delivery I'm giving to my customers, is it better? Are they, are they, am I getting more people the benefits they deserve and that they, they should have? And are my workers delivering that service more productively, right? If I have that, then when I'm called, you know, to a legislative committee hearing about status of my project, I can deliver some good news, right? Um, so, so this is what I think, this is where we're evolving to, and this is kind of the, the type of use cases that I'm starting to socialize with my customers now when I'm talking about Splunk, and I'm talking about the value specifically of machine data, okay? so. Just real quickly, so if you have self-service applications, a bunch of web logs, right? Start ingesting those web logs. Let's see what we can sort of surmise about our customer experience within those web logs. Um, and just as an example, we have a customer, Texan, Texas Health and Human Services Commission. So as you can imagine, so unlike California, California is you know, unique in all ways. Um, Texas has what we call an integrated eligibility system. Right, so for all of their social programs, right, whether it's SNAP, TANF, whether it's um, you know Medi Medicaid, uh, all those programs are kind of consolidated into a single sort of online presence, right? So people can go on and apply for eligibility and figure out all the different programs that they're available by providing kind of a single source of information, right? So that's a little different in California, right? Just just somewhat different, um, but uh, all the use cases kind of still apply. Um, and so one, some of the things that they're doing is really, they, they are really instrumenting their application by consuming the machine data to really understand what their customer's experience is like, right? So a couple of the quick things that, you know, we can see right here, I mean, great quote here from the customer, and you'll have the slides so you can look at that, but just simply, you know, hey, you know, the director of this agency, this large agency wants to know, well, where is all the activity in the system right now, geographically? What counties are applying? What precincts are applying, right? Boom, you know, we can plot that out on a map for him. This is very useful information. It's stuff that he couldn't get right away before. So just kind of interesting executive information. Of course, we do all the traditional 
um, IT operations, thank you, and systems management stuff. So, you know, hey, is my system running? Is it available to my customers? That kind of information. That's all basic stuff. But here's the interesting one, end-to-end -end transaction analysis. So in real time, right, if I wanted to, I could, it, I could kind of snoop on a customer and see what their experience is like as they're moving through our system, right? And so, you know, I'm able to track the user ID regardless of what channel they're in or what system they're in. Because think about it, eligibility could be a complex process, right? I may have one system that determines Medicaid eligibility and another system that, you know, dictates eligibility for food stamps, right? But they all have to kind of come back into one place and land at that same place. What Splunk is capable of doing is consuming machine data from all of those different systems in a single dashboard, okay? So as I'm watching the customer experience, right, he's bouncing, you know, he's, he's providing information here and providing information there and he's giving messages back. I can actually see that cycle time between all of those different loop points, right? I can see how much time he's spending on page one of the application, field four of the application. Okay, so if I'm an app developer, right, that's developed this nice application for my customers, maybe that information would be useful for me to know that every time they get to page two, they get hung up on this one field. Why is that, right? And you know, 90% of the people are spending five minutes on field four and only 10 seconds on field two. Well, wh why is that? There must be something that's confusing about that field, right? So I can go back to my app development team and say, hey, how, how can we improve on this, right? How can we deliver better services to our customer? How can we make it easier for them to get through this field? So that's exactly what Texas HHSC has done, right? So they've, they've inspected all this data coming in from their web application and said, hey, we can make this better. We can put these questions earlier up in the application so we gather that information and save maybe the tougher ones for later right? The bet more we can keep these people in their online application and keep them out of the more expensive channels, right? Think about the more expensive channels, whether that's chat, or it's on the phone, right? I mean, there's, you know, if we can keep them online, we're going we're gonna to process this more efficiently, make it better for the customer, okay? So these are the kind of things that they're doing, which I think are, are really interesting. And I just jotted down, you know, a couple of the things that they're also looking at. Um, so you got a plot of kind of where the customers are coming in from, um, the other thing that they're looking at are the top referring websites, right? So, you know, when Covered California was coming live and all that, you remember there was a, just a giant outreach program, right? You'd see it on TV, billboards, right? And I'm sure that they were buying up a bunch of Google AdWords, you know, and things like this too. So knowing, you know, sort of the effectiveness of my outreach program in reaching, you know, the people that need to apply for benefits is important, right? Again, this is all about measuring the quality of our service delivery. Okay, so um, you know, knowing those top referring websites I think is important. It makes me know where, hey, if I'm gonna go spend some marketing money next time, maybe I'll buy more Google AdWords because that was a better you know, directive than maybe Facebook spending, right? Um, common searches, right? So if you've got a bunch of online presence out there, so I talked about self-service applications, right? I'm applying for a license, I'm registering online to vote, you know, I'm looking for unemployment insurance benefits, renewing my license, whatever it is. Uh, but there's also a bunch of other stuff. You know, what are my most uh, downloaded assets, digital assets? State departments put a tremendous amount of information out there online. I, I wonder if we even know which ones are the most popular, right? And which ones haven't been downloaded at all so we can get rid of them. Um, you know, so, so, you know, kind of having knowledge about those digital assets and which ones are most popular for customers is also important. Um, common searches. Uh, most frequent pages access. And then the other thing is, you know, just basic stuff like what kind of browsers are my people using to access my site? What's the most common browser? What version? What, what kind of devices are they using? How many are percent mobile versus iPad versus, you know, sitting at a desktop, right? I guess my point about all this stuff is, is not to overwhelm you with information, but just try to kind of give you some ideas about the type of stuff that you might be able to collect. And this is all collected, you know, through, through Splunk and analyzed with Splunk. Um, just give you some ideas about what the type of data you can collect and the, the type of insight that you can get about your customer. And again, the idea is to t tie all this to how can we better deliver our services to our customers, right? Does that make good sense? Okay. Um, so real quick, and then I'm going to pass it back here. Another use case that we have is around um, a, a smaller police department in Chandler, Arizona. But I, I, I love this one because it's, it's so unique in my mind. It's a police department that probably started off... Um, using Splunk to make sure that these critical systems that they use, their computer-aided dispatch system, right, to make sure police are getting to the crimes, and the records management system, right, to make sure that, you know, we're tracking all our case information. 
okay? They want to make sure those were operating all the time at a high level of, you know, basically no downtime. These are mission critical systems. But then they started saying, okay, what else, what, else, what other kind of data can we get out of this? What can we do with the system? And so they had a couple interesting things. So they have one where they've kind of created a dashboard for uh, their officers. You know, so it's basically just an easy screen that they can go to and they can give them query capability into all the records. So they can see kind of, you know, hey, you know, this suspect, you know, what, uh, you know, they're digging into the record, into the records management system, finding out how many different crime reports have been filed on this particular suspect, you know, what has it been, where have they occurred, this kind of stuff. But on the worker productivity side of things, which I think is very interesting, a sergeant can take this data and query about and see, hey, how many crime reports has this officer filed? How many have we closed this month, right? So that, that police statistics tracking of, you know, what are the effectiveness of my teams? Again, so the two halves of the equation I talked about are customer behavior, understanding that, and worker productivity, right? So how, how, how good can we deliver those services? Where are all the crimes happening? And how fast are our, uh, re our reaction time, response times mm -hmm. to those particular precincts? Are there wide variabilities? If it takes me one minute to get here and 10 minutes to get there, what, what is that reason, right? So making our processes more efficient. And then finally, they have a really interesting one where they sort of transcribe messages between patrol cars, right? Um, and so what they're looking for there is they're fishing around and because we're able to look at things in real time, we can see that message traffic coming through in real time and they're able to look at if officers are exchanging inappropriate language, right? And so this is a sort of a performance metric for them and making sure that they're uh, incenting the proper behavior right amongst their own police force according to their goals and their mission. So I just think those are some very interesting use cases that you guys might be able to think about um, as you kind of come out of this session and think about if, you, if I start looking at all that log data being, being spun off by all these machines, you know, hey, maybe there's some valuable insight for me there. Um, I've got another one that you guys want to talk about. It's, it's more on uh, kind of understanding uh, sort of green buildings and uh, power efficiency, but I'm going to go ahead and skip that because I want to hand it back to Rahul here. So one thing which which, which I uh, want wanted to share is um, it's the same data what what Jason is talking about that might be used by IT operations application delivery and if you add a little bit business context to it it could be used by the business team so you don't have to go and create these data silos you are breaking those data silos with Splunk the other thing is we complement BI systems we don't replace them BI systems have a specific need a purpose. But there could be certain workloads that that are inefficient in the business analytics it's in the BI system could be moved to Splunk. So again, uh, just to recap, we can take data from any of the data sources. It could be from wire data, relational databases, mobile, clickstream data. Uh, Splunk is a platform for that machine data. We have multiple products. Splunk Enterprise, it's a free download that can scale the same download that you do, can scale up to hundreds of terabytes into a data center. If you are in cloud on AWS, um, we also have Splunk Cloud, which is hosted on AWS. Uh, software as a service, the same power of Splunk into, into the cloud. Uh, with Hunk, which is analytics for Hadoop. And then Splunk Lite is more geared towards very small uh, IT organizations that are just looking for very powerful log search. And then we have premium apps. Uh, we talked uh, the concept of, of an app. Uh, on, on our App Store, there are 600 plus apps on our App Store. Uh, we have apps uh, for security. You got, some of you might be already aware of it. Uh, Mint, which is for mobile. So if you have any mobile applications and you want to ma monitor the performance of the uh, mobile applications from a, um, from a performance standpoint uh, as it relates to crashes or usage standpoint, you could use Mint. Uh, we have uh, apps for Exchange. Plus, we partner with um, with very uh, good technology companies like um, FireEye and Palo Alto Networks, uh, ServiceNow, and and so forth to really create that ecosystem where you could talk to those applications in a very efficient fashion. So, uh, Splunk is a um, is a product that will really enable you to create that uh, data fabric within the organization. So, you could uh, bring in data from any of those data sources into Splunk. You could uh, do ad hoc searches, reports, monitors, uh, but you could also enrich that data from any of our structured databases. So, any of your structured databases could be uh, used to mash up that uh, machine data with uh, structured data. And if you have a specific 
BI product that you are familiar with like Excel or Tableau, you for the first time you can have access to machine data into those uh, BI products. BI products typically uh, Tableau and MicroStrategy, Excel have focused on structured data because uh, that's how uh, they can process it. But we have created that the, the piece of technology which will enable uh, access to machine data uh, in with those products. And again, this is a NASCAR slide. It's an eye chart. Uh, 9,000 customers over 100 countries. We're really disrupting uh, the, the data space and the analytics space. Uh, there are a number of government agencies as well uh, that, uh, that Jason was talking about. Uh, that use us, many of them we can't name, many of them we can name and you see some logos over there. Again, very easy to get started. Uh, if you if you want to do a free uh, free download, you can do it a free download of Splunk Enterprise, Hung. If you want to try, uh, do an online trial, uh, we have uh, sandboxes that you can use uh, Splunk and try it online uh, using one of our sandboxes. Or if you are in AWS, there are Omnis for uh, Splunk as well as uh, Hunk that you could start using. So just to quickly summarize, uh, it's a new class of data. This is machine data is a new class of data. It has very critical, uh, in, uh, it has critical insights for the business and you could use Splunk to do that. You can enrich that machine data uh, with uh, any of your structured data to drive meaningful insights. All those insights are available to you in real time. So unlike traditional systems where you have to wait for uh, the batches to complete and wait for four hours or a day, you have access to that data in real time. And then we complement any of the traditional tools. So I, all we are saying is we don't replace a data warehouse, but there might be workloads that you put into a data warehouse because there was nothing else available for you. Uh, now there are technologies that are available for you that could um, be effectively used to solve those problems in an efficient fashion. Lastly, we, uh, we have a user conference, uh, which is a very uh, good user conference, one of the best user conferences uh, that you will find. It's very technical, but we also have a particular event which is focused specifically on government. That event is uh, in DC on October 22nd. Highly encourage you to attend this event. Uh, there will be a lot of uh, government agencies that would be speaking at that event. Uh, you will also learn from Splunkers about the different technologies and how to get started and increase your knowledge about the, uh, about uh, Splunk. Uh, you can register it online if you go uh, search for uh, Splunk Gov Summit 2015. You can uh, enroll for that event as well. And the, and the event is not specifically around one use case. It is across all the solution areas, IT op operations, application delivery, business analytics, and Internet of Things. That's pretty much what we had. We, we have a booth in, uh, in the exhibit hall. Uh, Jason is here local. You can ask him any questions. You can ask me questions. Uh, we are very open about everything that we do. We truly believe in the community. Uh, if you have any questions, if you're an existing user, uh, if you have questions, Splunk Answers is the area where you can ask any Splunk technical question. Uh, there are a number of resources available uh, for anyone who's not uh, familiar with Splunk. We are online, we have a number of use cases and videos, uh, as well as uh, how-to guides to get you guys started with Splunk. Uh, again, uh, thank you for your time, really appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure to ask us, and we look forward to uh, seeing you at the booth. Thank you.